DeerFest TV is brought to you by Benchy, the official UTV of DeerFest. Bergstrom, GM of Oshkosh, and the all-new 2014 Chevy Silverado. Horny Buck Seed Company, growing the bucks of tomorrow. Whitetail Dreams Real Estate, buying or selling, trust the professionals at Whitetail Dreams Real Estate. Gold Tip, the official arrow of DeerFest. Diamond, by Bowtech, in the all-new Infinite Edge, the last bow you will ever have to buy. DeerFest TV is also brought to you by Rage Broadheads, Elite Archery, Field Logic, and Budweiser. Well, Dustin, uh, we'd like to welcome everybody back to uh, DeerFest TV. You know, we hope you had a chance to view last week's episode where we highlighted the entire season. But as we discussed, you know, one of the great advantages of the Internet is that episode still sits there. So if you didn't get a chance to see it, you can go back and watch it. But, uh, you know, another advantage of the Internet we talked about about is we're able to bring people live updates of what's going on in the hunting season. And uh, the Wisconsin bow season got off to a great start. Our good friend Matt Serwa from Real Deal Mineral harvested a 200-inch giant. And... Uh, you had a little luck as well, but uh, we'll save that for later. But what else can we tell viewers about the first couple of weeks of the season? Yeah, you know, um, like Dad said, we really got off to a great start here to start the Wisconsin season. And I was fortunate enough to harvest a mature buck three days into the season. But you know, some of the things we want to highlight is the weather. We had unbelievable weather here to start the season. The first week was great. We saw unbelievable deer movement. Um, we had a lot of fronts moving in and out throughout that course that week. So it really got deer on their feet and moving. You know, you'll see some of the footage on next season, um, but we were pretty fortunate with seeing deer there were a couple nights we saw close to 20 different bucks and over 50 deer on certain sits and like we said we were lucky enough to harvest a really good buck already this year so we're looking forward to showing you guys that next season tell people a little bit about uh, the food sources that they were hitting that first week we had some surprises uh, they weren't hitting traditional sources and you know they were great surprises yeah you know I mean that's the thing that really shocked us is typically this time of year you know we're seeing deer on clover and alfalfas and things like that but we had such cool weather, you know, that I think it kind of got those deer on to different food sources. And we actually did have a couple mornings where there was a little bit of a light frost. So it might have started turning some of those turnips and those brassicas and rapes, you know, into the sugars a little bit more from the starches. And we were very fortunate enough to get some unbelievable footage. And that's actually what we keyed in on early in the year were those food sources. And we had unbelievable luck from uh, Sweet Frost. It's a blend by Horny Buckseed, one of our sponsors. And, you know, you'll see that footage next season and maybe a few clips in and out throughout this season, but we were lucky enough one night to see over 60 deer on that food plot and uh, 20 different bucks and a couple of really good ones. So, you know, we're looking forward to you guys seeing that footage. It's probably some of the most unbelievable footage we've ever shot, especially for yeah. September. You know, when you're talking about four and a half or five and a half year old deer getting in fights uh, this time of year, kind of sparring, establishing down, it was, it was pretty awesome. Yeah, I was really surprised by that sweet frost, you know, from Horny Buck Seed. It came up, it looked awesome, you know, I was hoping the deer would hit it a little bit later in the year, but boy, they were pounding it, and of course you killed your buck over another Horny Buck product called Dead Zone, but we'll make people uh, watch for that uh, in the upcoming season, but uh, let's talk a little bit about this week's show. What are the viewers going to see this week? Right, um, you know, when we look ahead into the episode, obviously, you know, last week we went through what the different segments are going to highlight, and this week we're just going to briefly touch on what each one of those are going to talk about, and then you're going to see it throughout the episode, so... You know, this week on the Back 40 segment, we're going to sit down with Jeremy Van Hooley of Whitetail Dreams Real Estate, and we're just going to talk about what we need to look for and what we should try and find in hunting property and where we can find that information. So that's what we're going to sit down and talk to Jeremy about this week. Oh, and you're going to hear food water cover a million times over the course of the year, but uh, Young Bucks is off to a great start. Uh, this week, uh, you'll see Megan at John Sports Shop in Oshkosh. She gets her brand new Infinite Edge Bowl from Diamond Archery. Uh, she's really excited, so... You know, that's going to be cool stuff. But then we move into Deer Raw, and we thought we'd tease everybody a little bit this segment. We got some footage of some absolute giants that we'd all love to harvest. Uh, they were filmed during the non-hunting season, but you're going to get a kick out of watching that. Yeah, I mean, like Dad said, um, you're really going to enjoy, I think, Young Bucks this week. There's a lot of laughing and giggling, and it's kind of a good time. She's getting her first bowl, and she's getting it all set up down at John's Sports Shop down there in Oshkosh. Um, but then we're going to go ahead and move into deer and deer gear segment. Um, and when we look at deer and deer gear this week, we're actually going to be looking at the all-new 2013 Bowtech Experience. Um, we were fortunate enough to be at the ATA show this past spring, um, sat down with the guys from Bowtech, had them explain the bow to us, go through all the features, and then I was able enough to shoot it. Uh, so we're going to kind of show you guys that footage and the key points of the bow, what Bowtech thinks the highlights are, what I liked about the bow, um, and then we're going to go from there and get into a hunt. Yeah, and it, uh, since it's early season, we thought we'd showcase an early season hunt, and uh, it was uh, 
one of your early season hunts on a plot on a piece of property we developed much like the back 40. It was a couple of years ago we started working on this product, a piece of property and got a tiny little food plot and it was a neat hunt because we had targeted one deer. You were still playing college football, didn't have time to hunt, so we had targeted this one deer as best we have. Opening night of the season, he shows up, and well, you'll have to stay tuned through the, the whole episode to see uh, how Dustin does with this uh, nice Wisconsin 10-pointer. Uh, stay tuned, and thanks again. Well, this week on the Back 40 Project segment, we're actually sitting down with Jeremy Van Hooley of Whitetail Dreams Real Estate, and you know we're going to ask Jeremy, what do you do to find the right piece of property? You know, not only are we looking for the right piece of property for hunting, you know, whether that be to purchase or leasing rights on a piece of property, but Jeremy's also looking for those same things when he's looking for land to buy and sell. So we're going to just kind of turn this over to Jeremy and let him explain to us, you know, what are some resources and tools and things we can look in uh, to get a better grasp and knowledge of not only what area of the state we should be looking in, but maybe in different kind of terrains, agricultural land versus, you know, timbered land. So we're just going to turn it over to Jeremy. And well, Dustin, one of the first things we do is we listen. Throughout the season, as you do, we're listening to where the big box coming from. From that point, we basically just go and scout. We do a lot of driving around. We do a lot of um, talking to the locals. And from there, um, that's where we, you know, we usually end up with a county or a a township that has good good deer population and is typically you guys are killing pretty good bucks. So I mean, what are you know? Not only can people hear about it, but I mean, I know like you've got some you know some reading material here. I mean, what are some good things you know to look in you know for say? I know you're kind of showing us some of what's in this magazine, but some things that they should look at. You know, maybe is it more deer densities or is it more towards trophy management? I mean, I guess there's a side for both of it. Some hunters want to see a lot of deer and some hunters want to have the opportunity to harvest a really big deer. So what are some sources we can look in to find those numbers and things? Okay. Well, as, as we all know, there's a lot of different magazines out there. You can read Wisconsin Whitetail Classic. This is a, a, a production that was done by Wisconsin Buck and Bear Club. Um, open it up and just take a look at it and look through the state. All the numbers are in here. Um, I happen to hunt Clark County. That's an area that, that has good deer densities. Look at the numbers. Look at the deer that are coming out of the area. Um, go online. Facebook, social media is a great place to, to, they have a lot of people posting different pictures of the bucks they have. So we focus on a lot of those on a day-to-day -day basis, keeping our finger on the pulse, talking to people in the hunting community. Go to your local archery shop. Everybody shops online, go to the local archery shop. That's where you learn this stuff. Well, we just want to do a short recap of our sit down with Jeremy and talk about the key points we want our viewers to take out of this. Um, obviously you hear us talk about food, water, and cover a lot. And, you know, when looking at a piece of property, those are the three key elements that you want to either try to find or have a plan to add into that property. Um, we also showed you magazines and things like that you can go in to look for. You know, look at the deer densities. Look at the bucks that are coming out of those areas. You, know, you have to decide that for yourself. Are you looking for a property in a strictly trophy area? Well, then you're going to be better off looking at uh, the buck harvests there. You know, what are the record book entries for that area every year? If you're a hunter that's looking to see more deer, then you probably want to try an area, find an area that's got the highest deer densities. Um, so there's different things that you can take away from this and look at, but we just want everybody to understand that you don't necessarily have to find everything. You, know, you don't have to find the perfect piece of property. You, know, you can find a property that's undeveloped, you know, and that's what we're going to show you throughout this back 40 is take a property that's undeveloped, you know, add the different elements, the food, water, and cover into it as need be to create an optimal piece of hunting property. Um, and also show people that own property already and maybe you're missing one of those elements so you don't think that you can get it, well we're going to show you ways that you can add those things in, whether it be the food, water, or cover. Um, and you're going to hear us talk about those three things extensively throughout the show um, and throughout the season. Hi Megan. Hiya. How are you? Good. You like to bow hunt, don't you? Like to be on Deerfest TV this fall? Sure. Well, if you're going to be on TV, we think you need a brand new bow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, Bowtech and Diamond Archery would like to give you this brand new Infinite Edge to shoot on Deerfest TV this fall. Thanks. I'm going to have uh, Dean Gaffner now from John's Sports Shop come on in and tell you all about this bow and why it's a great bow for you. And 
you'll be able to enjoy it this fall. Hi, congratulations. Hi. Uh, this is the infinite edge. What's nice with this, it'll go from 5 pounds to 70 pounds, from 13 to 30. So not only can you shoot it, your dad can shoot it, and you'll never outgrow it. Cool. So it's a very, very nice bow, and it's all set up in the package, and we will get this thing to fit you perfect. Great. You know what we can do is we can get you some arrows, find your release, put a peep set under, get her all aligned, go on the range, and help you sight it in. Okay. All right, perfect. What you can do is you can pick six out of here, half a dozen, pick out the color that you like. We'll buzz them on down for you. Six. You betcha. Okay. Okay, then what we'll do is we'll check your draw length. We'll cut your arrows down accordingly, get your release, and we can head out to the range. Okay. Right, excellent. And what we have is a Scott Little Goose, and that should fit you pretty good. And we can get this out. And check your draw list with it. Make sure everything is all right. Okay, if you want to give me your hand, you are right-handed, I hope. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. And then I'm going to need that hand. <laughs> Alrighty, now what we're going to try to do is hook this up on the string. Click that forward, keep all your fingers behind. and keeps you from screaming and me screaming. Okay, see if we can pull her back. Actually, that fits you pretty darn good. Alrighty, let her back for me nice and easy. Good job. I'll throw a peep sight in there for you. Have you ever shot a bow before? Mm hmm Cool. Yes. Yeah. So, so uh, Kevin from Bowtech, I'm talking to him now. He's the one that was the originator of this. And uh, this young lady is very, very happy with her brand new bow. And she's... And she says, thank you, Uncle Kevin. Thank you. Uncle Kevin. Uncle Kevin. <laughs> All righty. Now we're going to go in the back and shoot, and uh, we'll send you the film. Sounds good, buddy. All right. Thanks. See you, Kev. Hey, Nick Joe back here with Botech at the 2013 ATA show. We want to show you the Botech experience. This is our flagship bow for 2013. The idea behind this bow was to answer what the consumers have been asking for, and that is the smoothest drawing, the quietest, and most forgiving hunting bow that we've ever made. We've taken all of our technologies over the last several years, overdrive binary cams, hardcore limbs, center pivot technology, flex guard, wrapped it all into one product and made it just that, the smoothest, the most forgiving, and quietest hunting bow we've ever had. Um, you can look at specs, you can look at numbers, but what we would encourage you to do is actually get out, get to a dealer, and shoot the experience pound for pound, draw length for draw length, against what you're shooting currently, or even a bow you're considering getting, and see if the bow tech experience isn't everything you're advertising for. Thanks.
think one key thing to point out in this bowl is for you shooters who like a really solid back wall, this is something that this new bowl tech really offers. Is it's extremely solid at the back end, and it's not going to creep on you. you know, so it's a great bowl for hunting if you get the full draw situation where you're going to have to hold for a period of time. You hit that back wall and you're set. It's not going to creep on you. You don't have that letdown that's going to start pulling you when you've been holding for 30 seconds or a minute you're getting tired. Um, also, it's extremely smooth and fast for a bowl that's this smooth. And I think you should get out, shoot the new bow tech, and see what you think about it. You know, they call it the experience for a reason. They said, you know, it doesn't look like we've changed much, but we've changed a lot. You need to get out and experience it. So I think it was a really fitting name, and it's definitely something that you have to do. You have to get out and shoot this bowl to really appreciate it. Well, as Dad stated earlier in the episode, this is an early season Wisconsin archery hunt. Um, it is actually opening night of the Wisconsin season. As you can tell by how green it is in the leaves, we're on this small secluded food plot. Uh, we have this deer come into the food plot, and he actually is out there for 17 minutes, quartering two, until he finally turns broadside and gives us a shot opportunity. So we've got a lot of really good pre-roll footage of this deer. Uh, we're just going to clip some of the pre-roll together, um, and, well, you'll see what happens. Wisconsin archery season. The last four days we have had unbelievable weather. Highs in the upper 50s, low 60s. Bows getting down around freezing every night. Just unbelievable. Had pictures of this buck in here almost every day for the last week. It was a beautiful night tonight. High of 60 today. It's probably right above 50 right now. I love when a plan comes together. That was the buck that we came in here to kill. Wide, white horn. You know, it got a little dark on us last night, so we uh, we took the opportunity to drag him out this morning, uh, just get some better camera light, do a little interview here this morning, uh, a little post kill. Um, you know, just last night was just a, I mean, a magical night. Just, I mean, you can't ask for much more as a as a bull hunter. You know, have a plan set all summer long. You know, you you run the trail cameras, you, know, you go in there, you plant that food plot, hang those stands. You know, and everything just kind of starts to come together. You know, this deer starts showing up on camera pretty regularly. You know, the, the whole success to that spot is its remoteness. It's tucked back in off of a big, you know, 60-acre bean field, about 100 yards off the backside of it, across a creek. And 
The reason that food plot is so successful for getting mature deer like this to come out in broad daylight is it's, it's tucked back in the middle of nowhere. You know, I mean, it's not visible from anywhere. We put the food plot in and we stayed out of there. We go into that spot, you know, the food plot wasn't perfect. Yeah, there were weeds growing, but the clover came up. We put a camera in there and we just completely stayed out of that area and said, you know what, we're just going to let it be. We went in there and checked the cameras a couple days before season started after they'd been in there for about six weeks without anybody checking them. This buck was in there quite regularly. We knew he was using that area. And that was the key in the success to killing this deer was having a food plot back in a hidden, secure area where this buck would feel safe using it during daylight hours and staying out of there, not disrupting it, not leaving our human scent in that area. And that's what was the key to killing this buck. All right, in this week's tip, we're going to look at a little trick for hunting over food plots. And we love hunting over food plots. You can see a lot of deer, but one of the big challenges with the bow when you're hunting over an open area like that is how far away is that deer? You know what I mean? And it's not always possible to get that rangefinder out and range a deer. So what we do is we take these, uh, you know, surveyor flags. You can buy them at uh, just about any hardware store. Take a surveyor thing, go out with your rangefinder ahead of time. Go ahead and just stick them right in the ground. You know what they are at marked distances, and, and trust me, the deer don't be alarmed by them, they're not afraid of them at all, and it allows you to know exactly how far away that deer is when you're ready for your shot. <laughs>